Well, guys, I got a package from Pete from Team Restall in the United Kingdom, and he sent me just a whole bunch of locks. This is a, uh, well, of course, it used to be intact. It's been snapped, and he really just sent this to me to show me what the keyway looked like. Pretty nasty warding on that. And if you look closely, I hope you can see, but that pin is actually resting on that warding. It's only a five pinner, but I bet that's going to be quite entertaining to try to get up inside of there and open that. But this is a stock lock. He sent three challenge locks. He sent a, a union. And I'm guessing that's a five pinner. He sent a Yale and he's converted this one into a training lock. He did a really nice job of it too. So this is pinned up as a challenge lock as well. And then the last one pinned up as a challenge lock is this, and I always get this wrong. I say GG, other guys say, no, it's not GG, it's a GG, but whatever, it's GE, GE. These guys always have some really unique pinning and usually pretty paracentric keyway as well. This is a six pinner. Also, um, Pete's gone to trouble to convert this into a training lock, so pretty cool. So let's go ahead and pick, oh, by the way, here's all the keys too. He mummified them in this plastic wrap, but we don't need no stinking keys. Let's go ahead, since he said the union first, let's go ahead and try that one as the first challenge lock and see if we can get into this thing. I'm going to try out a new pick today that I just got in. It's part of the multi-pick shipment that uh, would have cost me a fortune if it hadn't been for Fabi. And it's pretty wide open. It lets me rest on the bottom. That's why I kind of grabbed that. I have... You guys saw this when I reviewed it. I bought two extras of these as part of the shipment because I just love these DeForest Diamonds and I kind of screwed up on this one a little bit while I was cleaning it. I got a little bit carried away on the front with the sandpaper, but that is a DeForest Diamond. And I think we can work... Oh, maybe not. It's getting a little caught up. This one is 23 thousandths, which is another reason that I like it. And it's that Euro profile, but it seems like it's getting... It might work. She must get a little bit caught. I'm also going to use something else that I've been playing with for a while. have not done a review yet because I like to use stuff for a while. They, these are Mad Bob's tension wrenches. And again, you probably can't make it out Oop, upside down. He laser engraved these with the thickness, which is kind of cool. But then you still got to paw through them. There's no way to differentiate. Uh, so what I did is I put some shrink wrap on there. So one millimeter is 0.036, 36 thousandths. And I got them in order, red, white, and blue, so thick, medium, and then uh, blue, uh, medium, red, thick, white, medium, blue, thinnest one of all. So let's start with this. See if the thick one will go in here because it looks like a pretty wide keyway. Pretty happy with these. And I really like the idea that there's three different sizes. By the way, he also gives the exact same three sizes and he's curved, but I haven't had a chance to play with those very much. Just just the uh, straight ones. All right, enough of that. Let's get back to Pete's lock. All right, light tension. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, I touched. You know what? Yeah, okay. It, I thought it was five. I just wanted to be sure that no magic had occurred. Some warped, so, you know, warp in the space and time continuum. Okay, that was pin two. Got a very slight fault set. What I can tell you, just having gone through the stack once, these springs on here are maybe non-existent or very, very light. My thumb is just barely resting on that tension wrench. Okay, that was pin two again, so I got a little bit deeper fault set. And see which one that is. That's pin one. I'm getting a little counter rotation, so he's, he's probably a spool. Okay, I lost the fault set. Okay, I just brushed something on the way back. That's how light these are. Alright, we're stuck in the fault set here. Okay, there I'm on pin 5 and I'm getting counter rotation. A lot of counter rotation. There we go, I gotta click on him. Let me just double check him. Okay, he seems like he's set now. Again, I'm on pin one with counter rotation, so he probably fell down. Okay, he's set. And now I got a very deep fault set. Let's check five again, see if he fell. No, he seems good. 
So 5 is a spool, 1 is a spool, 4 is cut near the bottom, and there we go. And because I just barely touched pin 2, I'm betting he either has no spring uh, or maybe he's a T-pin. When I brushed against the little ridge, it was enough to set him, but let's find out. I'm flapping my lips here and probably going to be wrong on every count. And we have what's looks like a little safety clip. So little pawls are holding it, or at least one pawl on that side. Maybe we can just pry that. I do have a key, but I'd rather not unwrap it just yet. Let's see if we can just pry it. There we go. How neat was that? All right. Another thing I forgot to mention, you notice new stickers here. That's courtesy of Jim Goodwin. He made a, a bunch of those for me. And I decided to put one on top of the uh, pinning board. It looks a lot better than that hand etched thing that I did. Um, I'm going to need probably this size. I'm going to turn it like that. That should be good. Let's find out. Nope. That plug is non-standard. Hmm. <laughs> no, that's too small. All right, we're going to do this the nasty way. Let me push that back in. I have to do this using the core as its own plug. So I think I can push it out like that, and then we can catch the pins. And now i got the pins pointing up, so then gravity's not going to pull them out, hopefully. Let's see. That's my plan, anyway. Let's see how it plays out. Okay, so we're starting with five, and it looks like... Okay, it was a spool, so... Made a guess? Guessed right. Four, also a spool. Three is three is a T pin. Make sure we're still lined up here. Everything's looking good. Two is also a very small T pin, and it's got a serration on it. Looks like. Oops. And the last one. There he is. He is. I don't know what to make of that. It's not quite a T-pin, but it's got a groove in there like a spool. But if that is narrow on the end, that could very well have gotten caught in the shear line as well. All right, and then now we can look at the core. Yeah, man. Okay, so we have in chamber one and three obviously threaded, and then two, four, and five all countermilled. And it looks like, well, let's pull the pins out. We'll take a little closer. There may be some threads a little further down in there as well. Okay, we got a serrated. We got a standard. We got a kind of halfway serrated slash spool. Okay, that's all there is. It's just there are no threads in the counter mill chambers. And again, I'm seeing, and I don't have an explanation why we have grooves like this uh, on two of these. I don't, I can't imagine that affects the picking in any way, but it might have been getting caught up. I, I don't know why that would be there. All right, here's what the pinning looks like. Let me go ahead and line these just a little bit. I'm going to do those tweezers. How come when you drop them, they always land upside down? You ever notice that? And, you know, while we're here... Ah! Okay, we do have five springs. We have... And I regret not getting them out, but they're not as different as what I would have thought. They are all fairly standard-looking pin... Uh, springs. Just checking that one. And no... No picking would be complete without at least one cat hair, right? All right, here's what we're looking at. 
All right, serrated on number one, standard, and then I hesitated to call that a serrated. It's kind of a wide groove to be a serration, but I suppose it could be. That's definitely a spool width, and then the last one is a T-pin width on the key pin. Upstairs, we had uh, kind of a spool, but with a narrowed neck, so it would fit into the shear line and give you a fault set. Number two is a very small T-pin. Three is a bit longer T-pin to get caught up in the shear line. And then the last two look like they're standard commercial spools. So there you go, Randy, what a great job on a five-pin lock. That's really cool. I really would like to know what the motivation is between several of the challenge locks lately have had this filed groove here. If somebody could explain that and let me know what it's for, I really would appreciate it. Anyway, thanks for your time. Stay safe. Stay legal, guys.